Hello, Steve from Evolution Learning, and in this video, we're going to have a look at control account reconciliations, especially those reasons for the differences. Now, go and grab yourself a brew, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully, you've got your drink or your brew or some snacks, and let's get started on this question. Your manager has asked you to conduct the monthly control account reconciliation of the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger. You have been provided with the following information. So use this information to answer the following questions. So the first one is confirm the balance of the customer's accounts in the sales ledger. Now this is testing your ability to be able to correctly calculate customer balances. Pretty straightforward really. However, there's a few little things that we do need to watch out for, which I'll show you in here. So as you can see, we've got the customer accounts all laid out for us nice and easy. Dead straightforward, go through, add those up put the value in here and decide whether it's gonna be a debit or credit balance. Now, because we're dealing with sales ledger, these are our customers and they're represented in our general ledger by the, the sales ledger control account. Now, the sales ledger control account, as we know, is an asset and an asset account is a debit account. And you can see the sales ledger is also a debit account because it's just a, a, de a detailed version of the sales ledger control account. And as you can see here, we've got debit balances as we would expect. However, we've got this little sneaky one here, this little credit balance here that's sometimes it's easy to miss as you're looking quickly down here. You can expect and see that they're all debit. So, always with this question, watch out for something like that. It's probably something that they'll throw in there. So just check your attention to detail and make sure you're spotting if any of those are the opposite way around. So we just go through and, and total these up. Obviously, when we have a, a load of debits, they would be what we add. And our credits, in this case, will be what we take away. And that will give us our total. So when you quickly add these up, you will find that the total comes to 41,141. And because all of these are debits and are positive, it will be resulting in a positive figure. So therefore we would just tick debit. Okay, so let's take a look at the next part then. We're going to total and fill out the sales ledger control account. Now, again, this is a typical sort of question that you might be faced with. They've given you a list of the transactions that you would expect to find in, this, in a sales ledger control account. But as you'll see, and if you've seen some of my uh, blogs or videos before, I draw my T accounts a little bit different to, uh, to normal. And this just helps to establish the account that we're dealing with. We then look at what type of account this is. And the sales ledger control account is an asset account, which means we're owed money from our customers in the future so because it's an asset account this makes it a debit account so that means a debit will be an increase in this account and anything we credit will be a decrease now they can help us really to understand where these transactions on the left hand side here where they need to go into our sales data control account so we're going to use the increase and decrease for each of these transactions now the balance brought forward is a little bit different. The balance brought forward, that's our opening balance. Our opening balance is always going to be whatever type of account it is. So it goes on that side. So because it's an asset account, which makes it a debit account, the balance here will always be a debit. So if this, if this was your purchase ledger control account, which is a liability account, therefore a credit account, the opening balance would go on the credit side. So the balance brought forward always goes on the side that the type of account is. Okay, let's run through each of these transactions and we've got bank, contra, discounts allowed, irrecoverable debt, sales and sales returns. Now the bank then, this is where our customers are paying us money. So sometimes students can get a little bit mixed up with what side this needs to go in the sales ledger control account. Now when money comes into the bank, that's a debit in the bank account. Okay, so we would debit the bankers money in, but then we would credit another account. In this case, the sales ledger control account. So when our customers pay us money, in effect, that's going to decrease the balance on the sales ledger control account because they're paying some of those invoices off. So the bank in the sales ledger control account would be a decrease. A contra, as some of you may already know, 
This is where we have a customer and a supplier who are the same organization. So we sell to them and they sell to us. So instead of us paying them and them paying us, what we will probably do is, is contra match off some of those invoices that we owe them and they owe us. So in effect, a contra acts very, very similar to, to what money would do. In effect, we're using the contra to pay off an invoice. So again, if we see a contra, that's going to decrease the balance because we're using invoices from the purchase ledger control account to match off invoices in the sales ledger control account rather than paying for them. Now, discounts allowed as well, as again, you might know from your previous studies. This is where we say to our customers, if you pay us early, so instead of paying us after 30 days, they pay us after 20 days, we might give them a bit of incentive and that incentive will be our discounts allowed. So they will not pay the full value of an invoice. So say if we've charged them £100, if they pay us after 30 days, they pay us 100 quid. But if they pay us within 20 days, they might only pay us 80 quid instead. So when they pay us the £80, what we will then see is that the invoice will be for £100. They've paid 80, there's a £20 difference. That difference is then reconciled by using the discounts allowed transaction. So discounts allowed, again, will decrease the sales ledger control account. Irrecoverable debt. Now this is where we have a customer where there's been a dispute or they've gone out of business and we're, we're writing that debt off. So again, if we're writing off some of those invoices, that's also going to be a decrease in the sales ledger control account. Now sales, these are new sales that we've made. These are goods that we've sold to our customers. So because these are new sales, they're going to increase the balance that our customers owe us. So that would be on the debit side. And then sales returns, as we already know, sales returns are just the opposite to sales. So this is where we have, uh, we sent some goods over to a customer. They're not happy with them, they've, they've turned up damaged or you know, they're, they're just not happy in, overall. We will then raise a credit note, which will then decrease the value that they owe us. So again, that would be a decrease. Now by doing that, by putting whether it's gonna be a decrease or an increase in each of these, that tells us which side it needs to go in. So anything that's a decrease, which are these ones here, decrease is a credit so they'll go on the credit side the sales which are an increase which is this one here an increase is a debit so they will go on our debit side now in true blue peter form here is one i have done earlier so as you can see i've put there in the orange anything that is a decrease and then in the green you can just see anything that's a, an increase and you'll see that they represent here on our sales ledger control account so you'll see that our bank because that's decreasing the amount our customers owe us. You can see there it's on the on the credit side and opposite it is obviously our sales. You can see that that's increasing so that appears on our debit side. So again, once you put those in, you then need to go through and balance that account off. And you may well already see that obviously we need to total both sides. Both those sides need to be the same amount because that's what we're trying to get it to balance to. And then whatever the difference is between the debit side and the credit side, then that becomes our balance carried down and balance brought down. So the balance brought down, this is the figure that we will use in the remainder of our reconciliation, the 41408. And you can see the balance brought down is on the debit side, which we would expect because this sales ledger control account is an asset account and that makes it a debit account. So the balance we would expect to be on the debit side as well. Okay, so let's go through and finish this question off then. We've got a little table here, and in this table is asking for the sales ledger control account balance, the sales ledger, so our customers' accounts, what that balance is, and work out the difference. So you may remember the sales ledger control account balance that we calculated earlier on was 4, 1, 4, 8. And the sales ledger balance from earlier on was four, one, one, four, one. And we work out a difference, and that difference comes to two, six, seven. One of the things to watch out for here is when you are taking the figures from earlier on, earlier on in the question, make sure that you put them in correctly. Just when you've put those in, just quickly check back through your question and make sure that you've put them in correctly. When you work out the difference, just work out that difference twice. Just again, just to, it'll only take you a second, but again, just to make sure that you've worked that difference out correctly. 
So part D of this task then is saying the sales ledger control account is lower or higher than the sales ledger by a certain amount. So as we can see from the table there, you can see the sales ledger control account is higher and it's higher by £267 as we've just worked out in the table above. Now this bit here is what's going to be really, really important to working out part E working out which one of these differences or which of these differences will result in the sales ledger control account being higher so we've got a load of load of reasons here now in the exam or in in some of your revision questions you won't get this many i've only thrown these in just so you can have a play around with the method i'm going to show you i'm going to bring a spreadsheet up in a second i want to use that spreadsheet to work through each of these reasons and what you'll find as we work through each of these reasons, I've just set the spreadsheet up so that it results in whether the sales as a control account becomes higher or lower because of each of these. Now, when we're working through that, it's important to think all we're checking is whether or not the reason results in the sales as a control account being higher. We're not interested in the value. And that's purely because in each of these reasons, it doesn't give us a value. It's just saying this difference may have been caused by what so it could be by any of these so at this stage we're not worried about what that value is okay so here's the spreadsheet and you may have seen this already if you read the blog that's that came with this video now what i've got here is just a spreadsheet where we've got a mock-up sales ledger control account and a mock-up sales ledger now all this is doing is comparing these two balances so the balance brought down on the sales ledger control account and the balance brought down on the sales ledger. So at the moment, you can see that it just shows that the both balances are equal. Now I wanna run through each of these reasons and see what happens then to the balances when I put those mistakes through. And you'll see here then it'll change. So let's do the first one. It says goods returned were entered twice in a customer's account in the sales ledger. So here's customer returns. So if we enter that 9,000 twice, so in effect, we've got 18,000. So you can see now that the sales ledger control account balance of 26,000 is higher than the sales ledger balance of 17,000. So as we've seen already, the sales ledger control account in the question has a higher balance than the sales ledger. So that first reason could be one of the reasons that's caused this difference. So we just go through and we just tick that one to say, yay. So let's convert that back to being equal. Let's go for the next one. So discounts allowed were not entered in the sales ledger control account. So we've got discounts allowed here. So if we take discounts allowed out, again, you can see because that's not there, the sales ledger control account balance is now higher than the sales ledger balance. So again, that first, that second one also results in the sales ledger control account being higher than the sales ledger. So again, let's convert that back. So they're equal. Let's have a look at the third one. Goods sold were entered twice in the customer's account in the sales ledger. So we've got sales here of 40,000. So if we enter that in twice, we've got 80,000. Let's see what happens. So now we can see that the sales ledger balance is now higher than the sales ledger control account. So in other words, the sales ledger control account balance is lower than the sales ledger. So that one, let me just change the color of the pen, that one there doesn't result in the difference we can see in the top part of the question. Let's just say there results in the sales of the control account being higher than the sales ledger. It results in the opposite. So I want to run through just another one of these because I'll give you access to this spreadsheet so you can have a go at these yourself and see how things work. And I think it's good to be able to visualize the effect that each of these are having. So the more you practice with using something like this, the more you start to see what is the impact that's happening. So let's have a look at the fourth one. Goods returned were not entered in the sales ledger control account. So goods returned, let's take those out as if they're not entered. So now as we can see, it results in the sales ledger control account being higher than the sales ledger. So therefore that is a sort of reason, that is one of those reasons 
that results in the sales ledger control account being higher than the sales ledger. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to run through all of those. I think, you know, you've seen how the impact works. Now, one of the things that you can also do with this is if we just take the first one, it says goods returned were entered twice in a customer's account in the sales ledger. So goods returns, they generally decrease the balance on the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger. So the first one then, goods returned, they normally equal a decrease in our sales ledger control account or our sales ledger. So if they were entered twice, that means we've had two lots of a decrease in the sales ledger. So if we've had two lots of decrease in the sales ledger, that means our sales ledger would have decreased by more than the sales ledger control account. Now this is what really you're, you're aiming to get to is this level of understanding with all the practice that you can have with this question. So when you're in the exam, you can quickly look at that and go, right, okay, well, goods return, they normally decrease the balance on the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger. So if that decrease has gone through twice, that's obviously going to result in this sort of in this sort of situation here. It's going to decrease the sales ledger by more than the sales ledger control account because we put too many decreases through there. So that's what you're aiming to do with these is to get to that level of understanding. So let's just again try it with number two. We've got number two. So discounts allowed. They're normally discounts allowed. As we saw from earlier on in the question, they normally result in a decrease. OK, so if discounts allowed were not entered in the sales of the control account, that means we've had no decrease. In the sales ledger control account. So because we didn't decrease the sales ledger control account, but we did decrease the sales ledger, that means the sales ledger control account balance would be higher. So that brings us to the end of this video. Hope it's made sense. I hope you found this to be useful. It's picked out some of those principles that you need to be able to understand and giving you a really good method here to be able to practice and try when especially tackling the trickiest part of this sort of question. Hey Steve again, thanks for watching. If you liked it, then please press like below. If you feel somebody else will benefit from this, then obviously please share it with them. Um, and if you want to see some more, then please subscribe. Thanks, I'll see you again soon.